This episode of Because Science is sponsored by the Science of Mortal Kombat. These are the most evil plants that Poison Ivy could control. Plants are Earth's dominant life form, making up a full 80% of the planet's biomass. The supervillain known as Poison Ivy has complete dominion over this dominance, but most of the time to entangle Gotham in her schemes, she uses regular old trees and vines. If she wanted to, Dr. Isley could get a lot more villainous because Mother Nature has some downright evil plants that are just waiting to be Ivy's weapons. Tell Lady Freeze I said hello. To be clear, it would be incorrect to say that a plant was evil in the same way that you'd say a person was evil. Like any other organism, a plant just doesn't want to be eaten. Obviously though, plants can't just get up and evade a potential predator, so over the course of their evolution, they have developed a number of defense mechanisms that don't care about their lack of mobility. Defenses like thorns and mm, toxins. So when I say that there are evil plants, I mean that if Ivy wanted to weaponize a plant, there are much better options than the simple vine with much meaner capabilities if Ivy wanted to take on some <laughs> Ha! Take that, big boy! By far, the most common defense mechanism that plants use are toxic or poisonous chemicals. There are countless poisonous plants that use compounds and molecules to make a single bite out of them, anything from unpleasant to straight up deadly. One example is caffeine, like you can find in the coffee bean. It's the world's most used psychoactive drug, but it evolved as a defense mechanism in plants that acts as a natural insecticide that can paralyze or kill predators. And then there's scopolamine, which you can find if you eat the angel's trumpet plant. And if you do that, you can violently hallucinate away your grounding with reality and you can end up cutting your own tongue and dongle off. A guy actually did that. My point is, there's a spectrum. Though these toxins are terrifying, poison ivy can't exactly make you chomp down on any of these leaves. So when we are looking for a more evil plant for her to use, we're gonna look for plants that are dangerous in a different kind of way. The kind of dangerous where you don't even want to touch them. Oh, seriously though, do not, do not eat one of those because if Poison Ivy wanted to get nasty, she would control plants that could not only entangle heroes, they could do damage on contact. And contact damage, again, is gonna depend on mechanical weaponry, like large thorns, and chemical weaponry, like the toxins in the Cut Your Dongle Off plant. Poison Ivy's namesake, Poison Ivy, is a great example of a plant that uses the latter. When you touch poison ivy, an oily mixture of organic compounds called urushiol seeps into your skin and starts an allergic reaction in the majority of the planet's humans. Poison ivy is a great start, and if you've ever lived anywhere near poison ivy, you have a healthy respect for it. But poison ivy doesn't even come close to the worst thing that Dr. Isley could slap you with. Ow, hey, was that the dongle cutter plant? Was it? Our first choice for Poison Ivy's improved plant-based arsenal is giant hogweed. This up to 18 foot tall invasive plant can be found all over the world. And what makes it so sinister and dangerous, especially if it were under Poison Ivy's complete control, is that upon contact, hogweed can make you basically allergic to the sun. Hogweed sap on your skin is more or less harmless until it is exposed to sunlight. The radiation and the energy in it actually changes the chemical structure from fine to phototoxic. What the sap does then is in effect make your skin extremely sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. The sap is priming your skin to get absolutely the worst sunburn of your entire life. Inflammation, rash, giant gooey blisters, scarring that can last for years. Exposure to hogweed sap is so bad that the actual medical advice after you have contact with it is to stay inside and avoid all sunlight at all costs for two days. That might not be so bad if you're darkness and the night himself Batman, but it would be extremely painful and inconvenient for you. Do not leave me here. Do not leave me here, Bruce. I know you're secret. Don't leave me. Oh, my dermis. It's got sap on it. We're just getting started. A phototoxic touch is really bad. Excuse me. A phototoxic touch is really bad, but plants that can outright blind you or kill your skin are worse. 
Our next choice for poison ivy is Sanguinaria canadensis, or bloodroot. It's a lovely looking little flower native to North America. When you break or cut the stems, the petals, or the roots of bloodroot, it starts to ooze an orange red sap that resembles human blood, hence the name. And when this sap contacts human skin, the chemicals in that sap start interfering with the sodium potassium pumps in the membranes of our skin cells. And if that sounds bad, it's because it is. If poison ivy could weaponize these little flowers, then a tight embrace from a lot of them would cover a hero in sap that would start destroying the tissue on the outside of their bodies. It would leave giant gaping holes of dead flesh that would have to be sloughed off later. These wounds from blood root mimic the wounds that you get from anthrax exposure, from gangrene, and from necrotizing spider bites. I just drew a diagram of what happens here because you do not want to look up pictures of what actually happens. But but can we get meaner? Let's look for another plant. Oh, yep. Yep, okay. Learn my lesson. In 1521, famed Spanish explorer and conquistador Ponce de Leon embarked on what would become his final voyage. While exploring what is now the coast of southwest Florida, he was struck by an arrow covered in the sap of this tree, the manchineel. He died not long afterwards. Manchineel is also referred to as death apple and is the most poisonous tree in the Americas as well as one of the most immediately dangerous plants on Earth. The manchineel has such a reputation that in most of the places you can find the plant growing, the locals have either attached an explicit warning sign or marked all the trees with a red X. In other words, this is a perfect weapon for poison ivy. Every single part of Hippomane manchinella is dangerous. The bark, a poison. The sap, mm, a poison. The fruit, oh, you mean those death apples? Yeah. And they're full of poison. Even if you just touch the tree, your skin will start to blister. Those manchineel warning signs that the locals put on these trees, like the ones that we just saw, specifically say, do not even seek shelter underneath these trees when it rains, because the water droplets pick up enough a poison to blister your skin. The sap, if it gets in your eye, will blind you. It can take paint off cars. The native people who killed Ponce de Leon with the sap used to use the leaves from the manchineel to poison water supplies. They would tie people just to the trunks as a form of torture. Are you getting that this plant is dangerous? Given all of this, this is definitely the kind of plant that you just want to burn off the face of the earth, right? Wrong! The smoke is poison and it will immediately blind you. If poison ivy could control an army of manchineel, she would be far more dangerous than she ever was using just stupid vines. Ow. But seriously, so much poison. While manchineel might be the all around most dangerous plant poison ivy could use as a weapon, there is one plant that would scare me even more. Not now, Crane! Yes, you're much scarier in the second animated series. This is Dendrochnide meroides. It's an unassuming plant with large heart-shaped leaves. If you're walking through the right rainforest, you'd probably just miss it. But if you even brushed up against it with the slightest amount of exposed skin, you would never, ever forget it. Here is a closer look at the plant. Nothing special, right? Well, let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, how about a little bit more? Yeah, now you see the danger. The entire plant, the entire plant is covered with thousands and thousands of transparent, hard to see, silica tipped needles filled with a potent neurotoxin called moroidin. And this toxin is so dangerous, it's why you will often see this plant called the suicide plant. On contact, the tiny hairs on the surface of D. Meroides impart an absolutely excruciating sting. Speaking with Australian Geographic, ecologist Marina Hurley, who has been stung by this plant before, described the pain this way. Quote, being stung is the worst kind of pain you can imagine, like being burnt with hot acid and electrocuted at the same time. If you were put up against a plant like this by poison ivy, your first instinct might be just cut the plant down. But those tiny hairs that you're trying so desperately to avoid are so fine that they actually float in the air. And so, for example, forest workers working anywhere near this plant have to not only wear protective clothing all over their body, they have to wear respirators. And this sting 
would be the bane of your existence, not only because the sting is so bad and so painful, it lasts for so long, and it hurts your body. A road surveyor in Australia, where this plant is from, because of course it is, was one of the first people to document the excruciating effects of demoroides all the way back in 1866. And since then, Australian folklore has been filled with terrifying tales, like the unfortunate horse that was accidentally stung by this plant and the pain was so bad for so long, it threw itself off a cliff. And then there's the story of the military officer who accidentally used one of the leaves from Demoroides as toilet paper. He shot himself, hence the name the suicide plant. The plant's hairs containing this neurotoxin, they are so potent and so hard to get rid of that the pain from them can last from days to weeks to months. And if you do not get all of the hairs out of your skin after contact, remember they are tiny and transparent, the pain can last for literally years. In 1963, a man named Ernie Ryder was accidentally slapped in the chest, arms, and face simultaneously by the Demoroides plant, and he described the experience this way, quote, for two or three days, the pain was almost unbearable. I couldn't work, I couldn't sleep, and the pain was pretty bad for another fortnight or so. The stinging persisted for two years and reoccurred every single time I had a cold shower. If you do not deal with all the stinging hairs from this plant, the pain keeps coming back. If poison ivy could control these plants like she does every other plant on the planet, then you would have to handle her like she could control a swarm of hypodermic needles. You would have to avoid contact with this supervillain at all costs, lest you regret it for literally years. No, not down under! So, I know that Poison Ivy does pretty well as a supervillain with just her typical armament of trees and assorted vines, but if she was willing to change up her weaponry just a bit, Mother Nature has a much more menacing menagerie to offer. She could command tendrils of bloodroot and branches of manchineel to quickly send heroes to the hospital. I will admit that Poison Ivy is a better name for a supervillain than giant hogweed, though I would be much more afraid of the latter, because science. Just think about getting stung by this Demoroides plant again. So everything, it's, it's covered with all these hairs. And what they do in Australia, if you're stung, it doesn't, it doesn't just go away like an, a, an insect sting. The hairs stay in your skin, so the pain reoccurs every time you irritate the skin or activate it in a certain way, and it keeps coming back. Uh, cold breeze, cold shower. What they have to do is take tweezers and painstakingly take all the hairs out of your skin, or they use like waxing strips to rip them back out of your skin like they were forced in there. So, ah, oh, just imagine, just imagine. I don't want to. I'm Kyle Hill. Join me as we test fatalities, brutalities, and realities in the science of Mortal Kombat. Thank you so much for watching, Liam. You can follow me on these handles here and Because Science to give me suggestions for future episodes. And the one big thing I want to remind you, the science of Mortal Kombat. It's coming next week, first episode premiering on this channel.